time, our favorite time of the week, isn't it? Time to chill out, get a cup of tea or coffee or whatever. Whatever, I don't judge. Drink whatever you want to drink, eat whatever you want to eat, uh, and we hang out and chit chat about our week. So. Uh, <laughs> I had to feel a little bad last weekend for the folks that innocently stumbled upon my sat chat, our sat chat, because they didn't know what they were getting themselves into. They thought they were coming for a Dollar Tree haul. <laughs> little did they know they got a frug haul, my, you know, tiny little lame haul, uh, and it didn't happen until like the end of the video. So I felt some people were like, oh my word, get on with it, get to the haul. <laughs> so, uh, so I do feel a little, I, I feel a little, um, Sorry for those folks. They probably thought I was clickbaiting them. I wasn't, but uh, oh, but the uh, those little wooden things. I finished up that project today. Um, it is being edited right now, and two of the projects are actually hanging upstairs in my windows. But I have a couple here I can show you because um, these are here, not hanging in my windows upstairs. Um, so this is one of them. Ah, I did paint both sides because you know. That's how you're supposed to live, right? That's how you're supposed to do it. So I got this Frankenstein face. I feel like I should put something behind it. Oh, you know what? I can use... Let's put this behind it. So it's got some dark eyes. Right, so this is how the Frankenstein head turned out. Universal. Thank you guys for telling me it was the Universal Monsters. The univer yeah, the Universal Monsters. And then this one was um, deceptively challenging because I decided that I was going to give gold leafing and uh, yeah gold leafing a try having not done it in many many years however I really loved I used like a flake um, gold leafing flakes or metal leaf flakes for the flowers and then I just used a regular imitation gold leaf for the outside um, over red paint I think it turned out really well eventually <laughs> I have got gold leaf everywhere. If you ever used real gold leaf, because you know foli foiling is the hot trend, which I can see why, because foiling is on a plastic release sheet and it doesn't fly everywhere and get into everything. I probably have gold or imitation gold, not even real gold, I probably have like imitation gold flecks in my lungs. So <laughs> that's gonna have a Prop 65 warning on it, <laughs> if anything does, although it didn't. So I guess that's a good thing, but it's, so it's got a nice shimmer. Uh, I sealed the leaf on one side, uh, but then I thought, you know, it would be kind of cool if it tarnished a little bit. I think it would look extra spooky, so um, not bad for a dollar if I uh, don't say so myself and supplies I already had. It was fun. It was fun. I think this is a nice project. I think that you could definitely put a lot of time into these wooden shapes, and they had a lot more that I didn't even get. Um, so I think that'd be a really fun family project, or even just if you like toll painting or anything like that, it would be really fun. I used some acrylics that I'd never used before. Oh, I can show them to you. Um, and, and they came into my possession in an interesting way. I did not expect them, but um, they're from the Artify company. And, oh gosh, I used something by Artify that I really liked. I think it was probably, um, oh shoot, I'm having a complete brain. Oh, it was, was it a, they do have a watercolor palette that I really like. They had something else too. Oh my gosh, I'm having a brain cramp. I'm having a, I don't know, having some sort of moment. Uh, but anyway, this set of 48 acrylic paints, and I thought, oh, they're probably fine for gel printing, but I had them here and they were convenient, so I used them for painting on the wood and I didn't have to do two coats. It was, they covered really well, so. Um, Artify 48 acrylic paints. I will link it down below. It's a, race, a selection of colors. I think it would be fun for jelly printing too, but it definitely actually held up really well in that bol those balsa wood shapes. Um, because sometimes with, um, with cheap acrylic paints, that's not super cheap, you know, I can't remember what, what they were. Um, they sent them to me, I wasn't expecting them, they just kind of showed up one day, probably a couple months ago, um, and they just kind of sat because I hadn't had a, I hadn't committed to using them for anything. So, um, so they just kind of sat there and they worked out really well. Because sometimes, you know, the, the bottle craft paint that you buy, like, uh, in the craft store, it's kind of weak and you need a couple coats to get a really good coverage, but that worked really well. They kind of remind me of the Liquitex Basics. Not that I've used those that much, but um, I was pretty pleased with uh, with how they were to work with. Um, and I'm not a huge acrylic paint fan either. I did uh, get some under my fingernails, but I'm sure that it'll wash out. What else? Oh, I uh, got my earrings. These are from, and if you saw my unboxing yesterday, you would have saw the, uh, so a customer of mine who bought a couple of my paintings um, said that he had some stuff that uh, he wasn't gonna use, he didn't wanna see them go to waste, and he asked if he could send them to me. And little did I know, he had an Etsy shop as well, and it's called Lars, Las 
Artisano Shop. I know I have like the worst pronunciation. Um, and really reasonably priced polymer clay handmade earrings, handmade polymer clay beads. And um, they're offering a 10% off coupon code if you use Frugal Crafter. You can save 10% off if you want earrings like this. I think they're really cute or anything they have in their shop. They have some pretty um, uh, like shell ones. They have some ones that are like very like geometric, cute stuff. And what I like is that they're actually pretty lightweight. I like to wear big earrings. And uh, the only downside to that is that sometimes they're really heavy, but these are nice and lightweight. So I really like those. So thank you so much, Michael, for sending those. And uh, for the cute earrings, they're so cute. So I got three other pair too. So you will see them. And I thought, well, I'm going to pair that with a with a polymer clay necklace that I made so many years ago. It was like before YouTube, I covered a polymer clay uh, a matchbox with polymer clay. Made this little secret um, matchbox. I have never figured out what to keep in this though. Um, and honestly, sometimes the cord. This cord's not so bad. I made one that was like with a hemp cord, and it was really scratchy, so I could only wear it with like turtlenecks and stuff. But um, so I dragged this out. The tutorial that I learned this from, it was in a book, um, and I can't remember the name of the book. The I'm I'm thinking, and I could be completely wrong, but I'm thinking the person that wrote the the article in the book was Lynn Stevens. I think it was Lynn something, but for some reason that's just popping in my head. So if I if I'm crediting the wrong person, I apologize. But uh, anyway, I didn't, I didn't make this up. I didn't think of this. Uh, it was a tutorial that I saw in a book and I thought it was super cute. And I made a couple of these and they're so fun. They're, they're cute. I should wear them more. Uh, the other one's really scratchy though. So I have to wear it with a turtleneck. <laughs> I actually like the design of the other one a little bit better because it has flower, like botanical silhouettes on it. But it's just too scratchy to wear with a, with a sundress that's got a bare neck. Um, what else? Oh. If you want some drawing inspiration, I want to do a couple more shout outs this week like I did last week because a lot of you guys really liked those links because um, I recommended a couple other YouTubers. Uh, John Muir Laws, who is a naturalist, I believe, he does um, nature journaling. He's actually got a video up on base perspective basics. So if you've ever been confused about perspective and you want to learn more about one point perspective, two point perspective, he has got a, like it's an hour and a half long class on his YouTube channel, John Muir Laws, and I'll link that down below so you can check that out. If you feel, I know a lot of people are very, um, they feel like they never really understood the perspective, like the one point perspective, two point perspective, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I could really help you out. I did watch um, uh, a good portion of it, and it's very plainly laid out, very easy to follow. So I recommend that. Um, and also, Art Prof has more timed uh, time drawings up. Another batch of videos all timed. Um, drawing exercises. So take advantage of that. I mean, it's uh, a lot of us don't have access to drawing groups, especially during the pandemic. So something like that, you put it on and you can sketch while it's on your TV or on your laptop or even your phone. Um, you can get an hour of drawing practice in. I think not having to find the reference material, just just having something, okay, watch it, draw it, practice. I think that's that's great. It's kind of like following a workout video, but it's a workout for your creativity and for your brain. So, uh, hey, YouTube land people, creators, thank you for spreading awesome stuff. I appreciate it. I know my viewers appreciate it. And um, yeah, I like to curate that sort of thing. What else? I made some notes. <laughs> I'm still gold leaf everywhere, guys. Oh my word. That's probably a good thing I wear glasses when I work because I probably have gold leaf in my eyeballs. Um, Oh, here's some hot, juicy product news. If you like alcohol markers, Ohuhu has come out with, or is coming out, it's releasing tomorrow, so the 26th. It's releasing tomorrow a 320 marker set. 320, oh my word. That is the biggest set of markers I've seen other than Copic. And Copic doesn't sell it in a set. You have to buy them in smaller sets or individually, and they're so pricey, you'd spend thousands to get all the Copic markers. Um, so who's coming up with a 320 set of their classic markers? So it's the bullet tip and chisel tip. I think their brush markers are up to, I think the biggest set you can get in the brush markers is the 216 maybe. It includes, um, I think it includes the pastel and skin tone and then their largest assorted set. Um, in the brush and chisel tip markers, but the, uh, they're releasing the classics in a 320 set, lots of really good pale shades. Um, I was looking at the listing on Amazon, which you can't find, but I have it. So I'm gonna link it down below. Um, and also there's a 20% off coupon code that's gonna be good. Um, so the markers don't go on sale until Sunday. It will be good from 7 p.m. Pacific time 
on the 26th until like 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time the 28th. So um, I'll put all those details in the video description in case I miss say something. So there's going to be 20% off um, time those first two days of launch. Now, when a Huhu releases a new big set of markers, they tend to sell it pretty quickly. So um, I hopefully they will honor that coupon code if they sell out. But if it's something that you really think you want, then you might want to hop on it quickly just in case they sell out. They've sold out every time they've launched a larger size marker pack. Um, so I just want to put that out there. I'm not pressuring you. It will be an affiliate link, just so you know, because, you know, <laughs> I gotta put two kids through college next year, guys, so <laughs> that affiliate money will come in handy. Um, all right, so that's that's shameless consumerism out of the way. Uh, what else? Oh, so I'm actually taking a break right now. I'm filming Satch Out. It's, it's, it's 5.08 p.m. Friday afternoon. Um, I've still got about another hour and a half, two hours of work before I can call it a weekend, and I gotta do a little work this weekend because... The uh, what I'm doing for Critique Club will have to be time lapsed and voiced over for Sketchbook Sunday. But um, so I did a video. It was Thursday, and we did this watercolor book. Hey, I think that shows up all right. I don't think I need to turn that down. Um, and it was, and I was playing with some granulating pigments on agave watercolor paper. This is um, one of the new climate friendly papers. There's the bamboo mixed media and the agave cotton blend from Han Mule. And I was trying that for the first time, so I'm like, I'm not going to, like, get myself all worked up trying to paint the perfect thing. The first time I use this paper, I'm just going to paint something fun and easy and um, kind of get to know the paper. And I really enjoyed it. And so I'm using that paper again for this. The thing I really liked about it was that um, it facilitated granulation really well. And I'd asked you guys in that video, I don't know if you watched that or not, but it's up on my channel if you're curious. If you, it's a paint-along, guys. So seriously, grab your paper and paint along. Actually grab your cellulose paper and paint along because you don't need the fanciest paper for this. Um, that definitely acted more like a cellulose paper. So use whatever you have. It doesn't, it's not going to require a special paper. Um, but I really like how it, it seems to be really heavily sized and it um, helped my paints that granulated be a little more granulated. So I had asked in that video if anybody was interested in a in me pulling together paints and making a granulating palette because granulating watercolors are super popular right now and I feel like every company and their brother is coming out with a super granulating set. Shmika has a bunch. Um, I know there are other... <laughs> There's actually, the Want Monster really wants the Supervision granulating watercolors. I saw Becca Hilburn review them uh, a few months ago, and she ordered them off AliExpress, and I don't shop on AliExpress. So I was like, well, if Amazon ever gets these, I want to order them. And so they have a set of, is it a set of 10 tubes? I think it's a set of 10 tubes. And um, they're kind of like the, how you know how like Daniel Smith has some of those colors that like are two color mixes? So they'll be like um, a color that splits, and it'll be kind of green and kind of, red, um, like the color of the pigment particles will split apart and you'll get these cut, like duotone almost, but they're not metallic, they're a, they're pigmented, like, like a, a sedimentary pigment. And uh, so those are available on Amazon. And so it is taking all my willpower not to order them, but I'm like, maybe I have these in my, and because you know what, before they came out, you know what I said to my husband and he actually got it on tape? I said, I really don't need any more watercolors. Like a crazy person, I said that out loud to my husband. So he got that on tape. And so now it's like, uh, I'm going to order one. And plus, it's 68 bucks for those 10 tubes. And granted, they're 15 ml tubes. I don't think it's a bad deal. And Becca's review was really good. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll link her review, too, so you can, you can take a look if you want. I get it. I, I, should, I should make a list, because I'm going to forget half the stuff. But, um, but it, they just look so neat and fun, and I love textured paints like that. So the Want Monster really wants those, but I'm thinking maybe I have tubes of pigments that granulate that would really be just the same thing. Because they also have another set that's a pan set that aren't splitty uh, granulating colors. They don't they don't split into two colors. They are just like a single color that granulates. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I have all those colors. Uh, but boy, don't they look good. And they're in a cute tin with like a, a cute pattern on it. It's like got a watercolor pattern on it. It's just awfully cute. And uh, the Want Monster is raging hard for those. So, um, so anyways, you guys said you, uh, if you watch the, what, the people who watch the watercolor video said they really were interested in me putting together a granulating palette. So today when I was planning my critique club, I'm like, I really want to play more with that granulating idea. That's what I really have been wanting to do uh, 
for a while. Actually, I've been wanting to do this for like over a week, and a while. Um, I'm, I'm so like flaky. It's like bloop, 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 idea, 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 <laughs> jump, 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 <laughs> from idea to idea. Uh, and so like, why did I do that? Because I think Critique Club would be interested in that. So this is the first layer. It's not completely dry, so I thought I would film Sat Chat while this was drying. But I don't know if it's going to show up in the camera or not, but I'm getting some gorgeous granulation in the paints. I don't know if it's going to show up, but trust me, it's there. It's really wonderful. Um, and ironically, the um, Michael who sent me the uh, the earrings, he also sent a set of Van Gogh watercolors. I've never used their pans before. I've used their tubes and they're quite nice. Um, and there are, it's the violet and pink set, and there are two granulating colors in here. There's the dusk violet and the dusk pink. And if you remember, if you like, if you've been on the channel for a while, um, you may remember that a few months ago, well, it's probably more like six or nine months ago now, I made a video on making your own dusk colors using, um, well, I use Renaissance Mars Black, but you could also use Lunar Black from Daniel Smith, any sort of PBK11 black watercolor. Uh, and you mix it with like your dye colors, so like your thalos or your quinacridones, those like, so you mix the granulating black with this staining, um, like you could do thalo green, you could do thalo blue, you could do quinacridone pink uh, or quinacridone violet and get some really interesting splitting colors that way. So having a dye mix for the granulator, granulator that seems to work really well. So it's like, man, I think I could probably pretty much make anything in those supervision colors uh, because I have so much paint. I really do. There, there, you've all heard it. It's on record for everyone to see. I have enough paint. I have enough watercolor. Don't hold me to that. You know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cave. I'm gonna cave to the want monster eventually. But, uh, but I don't play with that because I always feel good when I use what I have and I and I postpone buying something. <laughs> that could be good. I could put that on my Christmas wish list um, because I'm hard to buy for because I just buy what I, I, you know, if I want something I buy it. And I don't really want many things, so I should probably just put that on my Christmas my Christmas list. I've done really well at like no spend August, no spend September. Uh, with the exception of the Dollar Tree stuff that I bought, but I already used it, so I feel good because I've used it already in a, and made a video. A uh, video's not up yet. It'll be up next week. Um, yeah, should be up next week. It might be up in lieu of a card making video. I do have a card making video idea, but man, I have been like, I just, it's like I just need a couple more hours every day where I have full energy. Um, I've been uh, just week. I just lo the days have been long this week, and I just don't feel like I've been very efficient at accomplishing things. Although I did lose four pounds, um, so after my <laughs> not recommended step on the scale last week, I'm like, okay, we got to turn the ship around, and I decided to do some intermittent fasting. Um, basically, I didn't eat breakfast, and I just ate lunch and dinner, and not anything in between, and. Um, and you know, just washed what I ate basically, you no know, added sugar, just super healthy, watch my portions, all that jazz. So I was able to lose four pounds. And I don't wanna hear any of your, it's just water weight business. You can keep your negativity, negativity to yourself. Let me live in my delusion. Um, so I feel a lot better about that this week. Um, but man, I do notice that when I, um, when I cut calories or I, you know, do a little fat, intermittent fasting, my energy suffers, sadly, um, and that's that's the real. So I just definitely want to just nip that extra that extra pandemic weight in the bud before it gets out of hand, and um, because I don't want to have to diet for six months to lose it like I did um, a couple of years ago. I lost thirty pounds because it, it just creeped on over ten years, and it's like, and it was hard. It was six hard months, and I was so tired, and I was so hungry, and I was so depressed. Uh, it takes a it takes a toll on your mental health, I think. Uh, but I got there and I just didn't want to, you know, let it creep back on and have to do that again because I don't know if I had it in me. I, I don't know. I don't know if I have it in me if, I, if, if it was like uh, something like that again. So, uh, but don't worry. I am being healthy about it. I'm not like doing anything extreme or anything. Uh, what else? I had some other notes here. Oh my gosh. So my, I had the bud. It's been, it was the weather. Today's raining. Um, oh, so I got. I went upstairs to, after I painted that first wash in my um, Critique Club painting, I went upstairs to do my hair and makeup and get ready for Critique Club because I knew that was going to take a while, while to dry. And um, so I put a headband on to get my hair out of my face so I could put makeup on. And just the way I put my headband on, I'm like, that looks fine. I'm not touching my hair. This is... This is like a miracle. My hair doesn't look crazy. I just put a headband in it. We're gonna we're gonna take this as a uh, as a pandemic miracle, and uh, I'm just gonna do my makeup and call it a day. And uh, so pretty happy about that. I'm not gonna turn around because I'm sure the back is is kind of a mess. But that's a good thing about a rainy, humid day and having short, naturally wavy hair. 
you gotta, you gotta, you gotta find that joy in every day, friends. You gotta appreciate those little things um, every day, especially when you're having a day where you're not a high energy day, and just having that little thing taken off your to do list, having to fix your hair, having that not having to do that is just a little blessing. You gotta, gotta grab the little blessings, friends. You gotta grab them. Uh, but previous to today, we had gorgeous weather, um, like low 70s, crisp, clear, kind of that you know early fall type, um, still warm enough, getting crisp at night, you know, but you can go and, you know, walk the dog in a t-shirt weather. So I had the bulkhead open because I love to get good ventilation down here because um, my, my filming room and, you know, horde room is in the basement, as it always has been. So I like to get the air flowing through, just make sure that, you know, if I'm using solvents or whatever, that uh, the, uh, you know, the air can change over. I'm not breathing in chemicals. And the cats love it because then they can come and go as they please. And Tally came in and she was going meow, meow. And it was one of those meows where I knew that she had something in her mouth. I'm like, oh no, what does she have? And she ran right to the room of Horde over there. So I ran right after her because I knew she had something and I wanted to rescue it and get it back outside before, you know, she finished it off. Um, Cause she, she catches and releases. She'll catch it and drop it. And then it usually, you know, runs off. Um, cause she'll come and try to find me. I guess, so that's a good thing about the door being open is that as soon as she catches it, she's going to run in and try to find me and she's not going to play with it and torture the poor, the poor thing. Um, so she had a chipmunk and she brought it over into the room of Horde and dropped it on the floor and it was kind of like dazed and I, I wanted to pick it up, but I was afraid it might bite me and it might be rabbit or something. I don't know if chipmunks spread diseases, but I didn't want to risk it and I didn't have like a box or a cup or anything I could trap it in. So, um, and it was kind of like dazed and then it scooted right off. So I left the door open. I think it made its way out because I was like looking under, um, like Jason's workbenches and under my shelves and stuff with a flashlight and I didn't see anything. So I think it made it w its way back out. And I did see a chipmunk in the backyard today. So I'm hoping that is the same one, but man, oh man, uh, little terrors. Cats are little terrors. Thank goodness they're not big. Can you imagine if cats were like the size of dogs? There wouldn't be any humans left. <laughs> the human population would forget climate change that the cats would take, would take out the human population. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but that was my excitement, my excitement for the week. It's been a very busy week, but it's been a, a work busy week. I don't think I've left the house other than to walk the dog, honestly. Um, I did go down and visit my folks on uh, last Sunday uh, and to see Jackson's apartment. Maisie wanted to go down and see it because he lives about 15 minutes away from my parents. Um, he works in their business. So that was good. And um, other than that, I haven't, I haven't left. I haven't gone anywhere. Not that there's any place I... I really want or need to go. That's kind of the thing. It's like, I feel like, um, like, you know, ramming around is very similar to like shopping or online shopping. I guess it could be in-person shopping too, but it's like the longer you go without doing it, the less you want to do it. So it's like those first, I swear when I was like, I think it was a, the 48 set of Paul Rubens paints, watercolors I bought. And I'm like, I need to cut myself off. This is out of control. And that was like August 3rd. And somebody suggested no spend September. And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea, but I really need to stop now because if I just start like, you know, getting in what I can for August, that's not a good deal. So I just decided to stop. I'm an all or nothing person for the most part. It's like, I don't, I don't do moderation very well. Um, so I swear when I first did that, it's like everything went on sale, everything, everything that I was like remotely interested in was on sale. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Um, but then I was just, you know, then I was fine. But so, but it's, and it's like, I haven't gone looking for anything to buy other than just like going to, um, if I need to link up a product or something like that, that's usually what gets me to, cause then I'll see like a deal or something. <laughs> um, but now I've been, it's been pretty, it's been pretty easy now that I've had a few, you know, after about two or three weeks, I feel like that the cravings of like buying something go away. Um, but also like the cravings of going places, it's like, yeah, I don't need to go anywhere. You know, I feel, I feel like the only place I've been going anywhere, is, but anyway, has been like the grocery store. So, you know, not really missing that. I don't miss that task. Uh, I don't mind going because I don't go that often, but, um, but yeah, it's like, huh, whoa, what's out there that I need to go see? You know, nothing. I, you know, I got beautiful scenery around here. got all the supplies I need, you know, I, nothing I got to go out for. I did go and, and craft my friends a uh, week before last. I told you about that during the last Satchat. That was fun. That was nice. Um, but yeah, I haven't really had the urge to go anywhere. This is a little granulating palette I've been working on. I decided to use a little palette I have my Daniel Smith paints in because I have... Um, I don't have a lot of Daniel Smith colors, but I do have some of the sticks and I bought the sticks. Um, I like those because they're, 
Um, and yeah, yeah, I know that the controversy, oh, Daniel Smith paints, their Primatech lines being kind of amped up with some uh, like dye base colors or some more, you know, potent synthetic co colors. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it is. But uh, for what it's worth, I mean, I still enjoy using the paints. And, um, uh, and I have them, so I'm going to use them. Uh, so I, I've purchased some of the sticks in some of the more expensive colors because the sticks are all priced the same and honestly I find the sticks easier to re-wet, especially if it's like a Primatech color, uh, because they're designed to be in that stick form and to be re-wetted, I think. Um, but I don't notice any difference between the stick form and the tube form either. So my recommendation is if you want some of those colors, see if they're available in the sticks because for me it's more convenient rather than letting a, having to let a half pan or a full pan dry, I just slice off a piece of that stick and, and jam it in there and, uh, and it works great. Um, so I have, um, I have like a few of this, uh, I think I only have two of the sticks in here because I do have cobalt teal in a tube. And then I've got the six set of the Primatex that I got on Amazon when it was like 22 bucks or something. And um, I also have the essential colors in here too, which actually, I mean, it's not like you'd want just a granulating color palette because you'd need some more vibrant colors to get the saturation, get the color that you need. And you can mix the, um, like your quinacridones and your thalos and stuff with some of the granulating other colors and get a nice texture to them. Like I have Potter's Pink in there, which is really weak, but it does give a beautiful texture. And you can mix it with like Pyrrole Scarlet and, um, and even some Gamboge and get a, a more fiery orange, but still get a little bit of that texture in there. So it's kind of, uh, I'm kind of having a good time um, exploring. I have three core colors. I have uh, Cobalt, Violet, um, Viridian, and Cobalt Turquoise here from Core that um, also granulate that I wanted to have in there. And I grabbed a Cobalt Green from my Lucas set of 48, but that's milled pretty fine. It doesn't seem to granulate very much. I thought it did, but maybe I was just thinking because it was Cobalt it was going to granulate. I need to, I need to do a little more research on that. I need to play around a little bit more, but I do want to come up with a nice um, a suggestion for a granulating palette that you might be able to make with what you already have because um, it gets crazy man it gets crazy it's it's a slippery slope it's so easy to add just one more tube just one more set just one more just one more you know you and then you get used to that avalanche of supplies coming in and you just want more it makes you insatiable it makes me insatiable I don't know save yourselves save yourselves friends I'm beyond hope but um, but hey there are worse addictions to have right right back me up guys um, I don't think I have anything else to discuss this week. Um, I will try to link everything I mentioned in the video description. No promises. I'm going to do my best. I'm actually going to upload this video right now because that painting is still wet. <laughs> the thing is when you want to get really granulating effects, you really want the paper wet because you want to give the paint time to settle out and give you the beautiful texture. Um, I don't know if you can see that it's upside down too. Ooh, it's abstract, you can do it either way. Um, so, but it takes a while. And you don't want to heat dry it because then you lose it. The, it's a time that helps the granulation. Anyway, that's all there is for today. I have lots of tutorials that I've posted this week. Um, so check it out on my YouTube channel, including that misty one here. This was posted last Sunday. There you go. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Toodaloo.